Hills of the main show. Uh, they will be on tonight, Steve Bernard and uh, Gareth Mitchell, some monetary experts. And I'm going to ask Steve Bernard and Gareth. Gareth will come up in the other part of the day. The other hemisphere, and the other hemisphere in both of us. Steve Bernard is a bit more vulnerable and very pleased to say a former student of UEL, or whatever it was at that time. So, we now have to say that we're going to hand to them and they can introduce themselves so there's a bit more on that. You yeah, have to say, so in the system of words, I should be able to do that, do that, and do that if you want. And presumably you need to go to the beginning.
we're going to tell you just what the Polaris font is in the chat. So I don't know this. It's fine. Uh, and then we need a technical solution. The was, what have they wanted us to achieve? And actually, what the reality was, because you can never actually achieve what the client asked for. Let's be honest, don't you? You'll be the truth. And uh, they said, you know, man, why don't we run them into everywhere? And then he said, that's as much as I'm achieving, and we can do this. Is that acceptable? We move on, we actually find it too, might have been in the middle. Um, so, yeah, the technical solution scheme is on through that. We're going to look at a little bit of the data from the data. We're going to show you what goes up, up, down on the graph. Graph can't really that stimulating, are they? Let's be honest. So, we've got a video of something being demolished. We like that sort of thing. Um, and then, in the end, we're going to go over the floor, and you can ask us questions about stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's us. Um, I shall now have a chat who's going to talk to you about why and what the projects are. So, yeah, I'm going to get Thanks, Steve. Hello, everyone. Good to see some familiar faces and uh, some new budget surveyors as well. Um, First one we'll talk about tonight is Canal Tunnels. Uh, this is up in King's Cross, part of the 67-acre redevelopment of the uh, industrial area up in King's Cross. Um, there's two tunnels that were installed at the same time as High Speed 1 when the CTRL was built, so back in about 2006. They continued to pour with the same machines and put in two tunnels about 600 metres long between uh, King's Cross and St. Pancras. Um, it was future proofing at the time. They were just left dormant from 2006 uh, until they started to finish them out a couple of years ago. The construction on site is all being done by, or well, managed by Argent, um, and Peridium as part of, the, uh, part of the scheme have won some of that work. And the initial part that Credit got was construction of three buildings um, that actually were very close to, but didn't actually come over the canal tunnels. So we started on site with, with Credit in about the end of 2012, start of 2013. Um, and the tunnels themselves, well, you can see the rough layout from what Steve's put up there. It does run a bit further into St. Pancras than that. It doesn't just stop in the middle there. Um, yeah, if you want to run through that. And so we thought that, you know, to, to be honest, it doesn't matter what this is a red line. Yeah, it's a red line, it doesn't really show you a lot. So we thought what we'd do is use a bit of the technology, hopefully it might work, and uh, show you what kind of content we're wearing. Because, yeah, you know, everyone knows the team's cross, and actually, if you look where the green area is, there's a couple of canals. And Brian, the thing's not coming up, I'm going to blame you. Um, can we have a go? It's there. Okay, so uh, let me just turn on. One of the... Um, one thing I want to say is that, yes, I come from a company that does sales, but this is nothing to do with sales tonight, and I'm not really interested in sales, so don't talk to me about it. Um, this is King Cross, that's St Pancras, and the blue line is the line of the tunnels. The yellow map is where they're doing the construction work, so you can see that actually the tunnel goes right through where the construction is, and they're going to develop buildings right on top, and obviously you can change the shape of it. But, um, I mean, if you do just look in here, that's the lovely Carillion sign there. The tunnel, the train comes off this line, goes through there. Um, it will cut to the world. It will cut across and then take a shortcut over to the stations where actually it's the capacity. It, it can change uh, the way it works. Um, yeah, it's really bad. There's the canal. That's why it's canal tunnels. Yeah? Okay. Effectively, the um, tunnels are in there to actually join the tenders of the program from Peterborough into St Pancras and then off to Brighton. So that's basically the reason that they're in there now. Um, they are now live, but not live to passenger traffic yet. They're just live to freight traffic. So 
Um, go to this. Okay, so what were the requirements? Basically, it is asset protection for network rail. Um, all monitoring is, is asset protection, it just depends on who the stakeholders are and, and what you're looking for, really. What we needed to do for network rail was to monitor the deformation of the tunnel shape. They were just concerned with the building works over and near the tunnels that unloading with excavation and then piling beside it made to form the, uh, the concrete rings. Um, they wanted a 24 7 capacity system basically because it was going into a live environment. So actually getting access down there is going to become extremely difficult um, and not only really possible to do on a regular basis. They don't stop work obviously on the construction site, so they don't want to do that. They want to continue work, you know, six, seven days a week. So they needed a, a 24 7 system, but one that could adapt with time. So basically, as the buildings changed, as the tolerance has changed, they wanted to update them. So flexibility. We're now on the program of about six years. We've been going about three years. First phase is about three years. We've just extended it. Uh, now, and we're into the second phase, which will run for another 38 months. So, technical constraints. A lot of problems with surveying in a, in a rail environment or a tunnel environment, if you like, is the constraints of geometry. Um, obviously, very long and linear. You just don't get that access to get the good cut on your prisms or your repeatability. So, when you're in a tunnel and you've got a lot of prisms down there, you get a lot of problems with co-linear prisms. So if you've got an automated tunnel station, you'll just keep locking on to the prisms in front rather than getting the ones behind. So you've got a lot of things you need to start thinking about and try and stagger what you're doing. Um, and you don't have a lot of uh, opportunity to do that. We had to design the system prior to the tunnels being fit out. So we were issued with the design of the fit out, and then we had to try and design our system before they actually put anything in the tunnels. Um, we've got some photos coming up that actually show prior to the works. Now, the tunnel foot out itself is going to be a slave track through both tunnels, a walkway, uh, cable management, and all of your emergency through the tunnels. Um, so there's actually quite a lot of infrastructure in there, and we had to try and work out a way to position our stuff so that we didn't get it in their way, and we didn't have to move it in the future. There's a photo pre fit out. So, the wall graphics that were set up on the other action, the same wall graphics that we used for Tunnel and Novel Project. Um, we reused those. Uh, you can see there's nothing in them at, at the time. They just started doing some cable management there. Uh, six meter diameter. So, quite, uh, quite a sizable tunnel, but quite tight when you start putting track infrastructure in there. This was the only way we could actually turn angles and install equipment. Um, all mubes had to be electric due to the fumes and problems down there. And actually trying to find a mube that's electric that goes down there in this industry is very difficult. We had to face with the three-minute three contract for the design, uh, the actual fit-out works. So we had to interface with them on a daily, weekly basis just to make sure that they weren't going to close with what we had in there. Um, and to move anything that required moving at the time. That's uh, the picture now of the fit out area. So you can see the tables are in there. You won't be able to make it out very well, but our prisons are actually located just above the walkway. Um, they are the original prisons. We haven't moved them. We did design them, uh, it came off. Um, now, there is a problem in here to actually get access because it's a live LED. So you can see the overhead equipment in here that's gone in the brackets. The walkway is now too close to actually use that walkway without isolating that power. So you've got 25 kV running through that and you're not actually able to use the walkway. So despite our best planning and hope that we can actually access that, uh, we can't without getting an isolation in a position to do so. They are now live. We can only get under their possession arrangements. So anything that crashes, anything that needs repairs, it's a, in the rail industry they call it T minus 16. So basically you need 16 weeks notice 
to actually arrange access. So we have arranged for access through there, um, but there's a challenge. You have to pay for all of your possessions, you have to pay for all the planning. So there is cost uh, involved in that as well. And one other thing that I haven't put on there is we were not allowed to drill the tunnels. Basically, Nimbacro were too concerned about the condition of the tunnels, but they said that you can only use pre existing holes. Now, because of the construction type, it actually had segments with pre drilled holes. Um, 16 millimeter diameter holes that were obviously used um, to help position the, the segments in it at construction time. We had to limit any drilling, and any drilling we did do had to be authorised and approved by the Crow, um, and that was a very difficult process to get done. So I'd say 95% of everything we installed, we did not drill anything in there. Um, no equipment is glued, everything is fixed with anchor bolts into, into pre existing holes. That's another photo of the change in uh, construction type and box section into the actual board tunnel itself. Um, so that is at its finished state, if you like. Uh, and I'll let Steve <coughs> move on to the uh, technical overview. Just say so to listen to me. So, um, yeah, we can put two tunnels. They were made for each other. And the problem needs to be two tunnels. But whilst you're waiting where the two tunnels connect to the port, they're two completely separate areas, and you can't just cross over. There's not a cross passage in these where they're working. And um, the problem now yeah. becomes. The problem was all this equipment, and how do you actually get a signal from any of it now as well? But the problem was also the thing is about for distances, the last total stations, and the last as well, the reason why. The reason the last of all these is there in the air, it's come up with my sophistication says that we should be able to measure this, we should be able to measure this. So they didn't mark that out to TPS yes, Freedom. They didn't go, oh, I need ATS because it's a designer that says it needs ATS. I need this because it's a designer. Then you go back to them and say, actually, you don't want that, you want this, because that's not going to do what you think it is, and you carry on talking with them about it. But generally, as we see on the last section, there's this current cover section, which is the boxy section, and then there's the ball section. And the system has to operate, whether it be in the section, whether it be 800 metres down the tunnel, or right where you can see the sky on the outside, has to operate, has to operate 24 7. Because they will be doing work to the And they have to make sure that they have three minutes or one minute's worth of data because it will be such a critical operation. But if they don't get that mission, if they can't get that warning, and they can't tell the guy to stop because he's just about to smash the tunnel apart. And then they can't afford to be The reason we're doing what we're doing is not because we like data, it's not because we like getting paid to insert it, it's because we're trying to track what's happening to an asset. We're trying to get some sort of early warning of this. You may need to pay you, aren't we? That's what it's all about. So, what did they say? They said to us, you need to move your way to the other stream and manage your making. Instead of leaving this 100 to 200 meters long, you need to make it now 600 meters long. Well, the only way you can do that is to add more instruments in. You, you can't do anything else. And the wiring system in there, did you see where we were leaving? Arrived at the top of that, so we were in a wire measurement because we weren't allowed to fit anything else. So we had to strip all of that out and then put a new wire system in. Yes, it's a little bit of a design, but actually, you can only put things in where people allow you to put them in. That's one of the constraints of construction. You put them in, you take it out, put it in, take it out, put it in, take it out. Everyone makes money, job done. But this says, in that cut and cover section, there's a real one in it. We think that when we build all the power of the it's going to bend over, so we need some rotation sensors on there. So, rotation sensors, tilt sensors. Oh, and when we can press the tunnel, we need to know how much pressure you're putting on the concrete segments. So, they are using green value, which is by rating wire in case you the end of the apple. It's a bit like a um, tennis in the stream, like under the tunnel, but you tennis it around with the diameter of the tunnel. When the tunnel's what, squats, no room for it, it's a bit of a room for it. It's a bit of a room for it. 
that is intention by all its incompression. That the string gets stretched differently, it makes a different noise. And if you all the devices do, as they measure them out, they begin to be more dull. <laughs> Super clever technology, you didn't know that bit. Right, um, but then you can go, but actually, that's how simple monitoring is. Monitoring is just doing a server over and over again, or pumping in the wire, or, or leveling a the bottle. There's nothing complicated in monitoring. Second half of monitoring the data, it's probably making you get the right result, but it's a complicated bit, but yeah. So the the that we see there, and it's the biggest thing in there since they started the monitoring scheme, and, and yeah, as Gary said, it's been going for several years. We also have a computer that the screen had failed on, the keyboard had failed on, and do you know what? It didn't matter because it was still doing the automatic work of controlling the, the, the instrumentation down below. But then we wanted to have a lot more stuff, supply and the blue. It was never work, so we changed to a much more robust server. We can have some drives and everything else, and you know, it went really well. Really well, actually. Um, so, automatic tunnels, they use ATS. They use this squat mobilization of the tunnels. Yeah. All you do is you turn it to a bunch of prisons around the ring, and then you work out the differences between them as a distance, forms like a star, and then you can work out what's changing where. Translators and the topics that are the one interface. That was the idea to make it so that you don't have to hunt here and there to get different bits of data. And so this old cable system that was in there, everyone changed over to new high speed comms, new high speed instruments, high speed comms, high speed everything, future proof, because then they can expand it again. Because it's already after the big bus, it's going to happen, isn't it? Let's be fair. But one's really important. As Gary said, you can't get in there. Now, I'll put my hand up and say, yeah, this is true, isn't it? Something is closing in there at the moment. You can't get in there until maybe no matter what. It's going to stay broken. You can't do anything about it. We think someone will pull power socket out from one of the devices because it stopped talking. It had a backup battery, it carried on for a little while, and then it's just stopped. We think it pulled the power up because it says AC now is zero. Can't really right. So, the OTS system. We have a lot of tunnel with no way of knowing between the tunnels what was going on. No way of any control and, you know, part of not making a fixed point. So, you have to fix the power there. Then you have to work out what this big skipping where the swinging thing is doing in the middle of the day. So, we made a, a controller network. Um, anyone know what I mean? No, I love a little program called Starman. It's boring, it's very good at doing what it does. And what it is, is it does a list of adjustment. And it works out by using the list of parameters. This is how much inaccuracy I think I've got in my system. Test my data, give it that. Yes, no, is it good? Push it out the results. Pretty summary, but okay, that's what it does. But this time it runs live, it runs every hour, every two hours, every five hours, and it constantly updates the instruments. So we're running it live. This is a little sample, this is the tunnels. So the two sets of blue lines are the two sets of tunnel stations doing all the observations. That way the angles ridiculously big so you can see them. But you can see I've got, well, we have got, which I know, so fixed control, the triangles are running, the triangles are running, and then there's lots and lots of I think it's going all for this. You can't do anything else in the tunnel. I put in the guy that did the channel tunnel thing. And the GB line. Why is that guy that done the GB line? I know he's got it there. Yeah, um, yeah. So you need to be able to set up and you need to make sure is right constantly. You need to make sure that even if the instrument goes on a level, it comes back to level by itself. Where you put the bit of electronics in there and it does it for you. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to the unit on that one, so yeah, no credit for me. Um, you need to make sure that, as well as you put all these tools lined up, and there's a bit of 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 a
commons in the power. Yeah, as I said a moment ago, someone's called a bugger somewhere. We don't tell. Um, but yeah, yeah farms and stadium information exchange. Because what we need to do is get that data back once a minute. Once a minute from an instrument which is yeah, yeah, by signal and then it's going to up to the service, up to the cloud, out of someone's phone as an alarm. Far from the stable, it needs to be stable because it needs to happen all the time constantly. The local computers there, as we said, I mean, you can do it on different ways. You can do radio, you can do cables, you can do pretty much anything. What we realize is that you can't do this in a tunnel. You can't run this in a tunnel because it's so work. You can't run an RS-232. You could run a 485, but then you would have so many cables at the end of the middle of the telephone and you have a bundle of this thing. It just wasn't practical. You can run Ethernet, but you can't run Ethernet more than 100 meters, so again, that wouldn't work. So, you can do radio, you can do radio with that stuff at the time. But actually, some of the instruments were closer, so you could do Ethernet between those, and then do radio between the other. So, this is hybrid system of them. Uh, and the hybrid system of them was sort of this. You know, you've got a table station here, a bunch of cables and a computer and a radio. That sort of stuff talks back to uh, a bit of stuff where they might come like that who have this GSS monitoring operating system. But it tells the table when it's turned into prisons, they tell the result, it goes into a table. Gyms. What we do, we've got a very, very big computer in there. With lots of redundant drivers. So if one driver fails, we can put another one in. In fact, it's a mirror of itself over. In fact, this is four drivers, I think. I mean, yeah, four drivers in a box. Don't have enough good drivers. Another one just heads over. Don't have time for failure. How many radios? Those radios will go 25 kilometers. They won't find in a tunnel because it's a bit like choosing a ping pong ball and a squash ball from a vacuum and it's going back and back and back all over the place. Maybe the balance of a lot of awkward surfaces. So, the cars were set to always be right. So, everyone here has got a mobile phone. Everyone's occasionally gone, there's no service, but I'm in an area next to another person. I'm going to have to restart the phone. Well, these things restart if they go there. Restart by themselves because they can't get down. No side installations. If you can't talk to something, you go, ah, I must have made a mistake, I must have done some something. Really starts by myself. They never are with this time by themselves. So when the trains go through, and they do go through, there's a bit of an air push, and the instrument just goes, yoink. Mind you, the young course, but yeah, it goes over. So they're really by themselves. Because we can't do that until then. And then everything has a redundancy, so there's not just one link between things. There is maybe to the gap, and also maybe to the fly, and maybe to the and actually gap to the And if you can manage things together, um, and if you want to talk to someone, I'm actually going uh, into the back, and Graham, wait, again. There's a very one of the company that has many other people that have the same. It was a young initial day long, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and each, each set has a power supply. But if the power goes off, remember we say two layers of power and we we know them and drop them down for each other. Yeah, but each one's got its own universe and uh, it's got some power supply. Then, rather than doing everything over the air and waiting for a cell phone tower to go down and, and then have a moment later, process of being loaded and then just push this tiny amount of data into the world. Rather than doing everything and being completely reliant on the system, it's just push tiny bits out. So this, I don't think it's just a blind dot. What Dan was trying to learn to learn is these blind dots are prisons. So you can see them in lines, you can see them in rows, you can see them going down the system. And this is right at the stage of the If you ever take a bunch of prisons and they're in a photo, put a flash on your phone because they reflect exactly the light that they're sent off. So you get lots of light dots. All the ones well. But you can see all along the waterways and all the topics, this instrument, yeah, it's got a 60 points ish measure, does it all the time, does it fail ish. Okay, so then, uh, yeah, I don't know if I've got some of the other grounds, so I'm going to see if there's another one of the wires and they're tool sensors, okay? Um, tool sensors that are wires and they don't have to uh, have batteries, they don't have to do anything. 
the company, uh, uh, I don't know what to do, they want to be an independent system. So if the telestations and all the monitoring from those fail, they've got a backup which is completely separate. Also, in this house, they've got a telestation which is completely separate. So they're going to end up with each other. But they've got all that information on all the comms into GMOS, all the real data went in. And because we're using these multiple technologies, we can make a few different assumptions as well, we can make a few different calculations. But generally, we've got robust information with backups. And everything is self contained in its own little size. So we're actually wanting to work in silos. Because I'm here and I can clearly be relying on all of you to get the bar later. We're probably not going to get it. But if I know the bar is, I'll be there first. That's fine with my book. So this is a sensor. This is a manual variety. I've actually got this arm ring up at the top. The two of those. You know, they don't have to think through the wind. This is what I was saying. There's only seven pearls to sell if I need to allow them to drill it. But they will drill with the rods. Then you put the bar across the top. Then it has the rods. So in and out. Ding dong, ding dong. All over. Yeah. So I'm taking back. It's not taking back. Yeah. Red table goes from there. Um, excuse me, I don't have any more guys, I know it's going to start over the other than another one, so, um, yeah. Basically, simple sensors, and what we do, get a pin, and all the sensors then organize themselves, and then just take it back. And when something gets in the way, come on, something, something gets in the way, they'll then reorganize themselves and push it back a different way. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mesh network, it's like that, you know. Um, all it does is that it manages the data, collects it back to the gateway, uh, that pushes it up to the cloud, then you can take the data, put it into your monitoring system, your off site is completely independent of the computer on site. Nice and easy. This is um, uh, just a little example of something else which I am going to skip because it wasn't that relevant to me. But as I said, apologies because it's um, no sound here. Um, but, uh, all this is a box, okay? This is a box, which is a controller of the, the radio systems, the mesh systems. There's a memory card, there's a battery, there's a power in and out, there's a GS. The important thing I want to show you is that actually there is a smart unit, and then a bunch of dumb little sensors out there. And all the dumb little sensors do is, I'm a total sensor. I'm a total sensor, I'm a total sensor, this much, I'm a total sensor, that much. And then they just have this box. What they're doing? These are the sensors. Yeah? There was a different ones that you can put these by the way in wiring, because it's some of the two, some of the other ones in one. But, um, generally, there's really no data. There's not anything that's bad, it's fantastic. Well, when you get out of data, if I only wanted you to have my tunnel, and I wanted to know that it's moving over by two kilometers, so I set up my data and said, if it goes over two kilometers in the next week, send me a text message, send me an email, send me uh, you know, the flash is being in the office. In the little software that the TDS is very familiar with, it's called GMOS, there's an alarm center, so you can set it up. It can do different emails. You know, when I go on holiday, you can go to schedules, do an island on holiday, it doesn't send it to me, it sends it to you. And then when you go to bed, it sends it off to someone else, so it's just a schedule, really. This is it. Do you want to send this? Do you want to send that? And who do you want to send it to? Quite simple. Uh, there's a guy sitting at the back there. Stop it, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Actually, uh, he was a sort of two months ago for one of the largest systems in the world. Four years? Four years? Three years. Yeah. So, um, if you want to talk to Jim Ross, he's a man. Well, that's the one now. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, we're going to have that data next year. How are we going to do with big data? Is it ever most of the big data that's a problem? Yeah. All the other stuff coming in constantly, if I was to throw a thousand numbers at you, every minute I would say, man, 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 you can't, you can't, you might have blown up. So, you really do stuff, and you make alarms, you make charts, and you go through, and, 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 yes, it's Korean, which is also shower, it's a bit confusing, they have different names, but, you know, it's just a tax dodge, probably, then. Probably. Uh, we look at what we're going to do with this place to show all the data. Yeah? And it's really very, very simple. Maybe someone from somewhere in the world looks at you and says, Is anyone coming with me today? Yes or no? 
And that makes you a child. Yeah. Not going to be able to use it, so actually, I don't want to look at it, but what I look at is the same as Gareth, so we have now different IDs that can see different things, really different charts, different diagrams. Um, do you know what? We're going to make nice, pretty ones, and we can save them, and we can then post them out to reports. And then every day, you don't have to make the same report with the same graph and things, because it will show them for you. This is the report. Yes, this is the one on the data, which is completely flat and boring. Do you know what I want to do? That's exactly what we want. We want boring, flat, nothing happening. And the reason we want that is because then one thing we know is that the data doesn't work as a data. The reason we want flat data is because we know that the data doesn't have to fall on the down. It has broken, it has no more, yeah? It's put into the parameters. So you can see on there, there's a yellow band, there's an amber band, there's a couple of them moving about to different places. What are we looking at there? Two millimeters? Yeah? It's absolutely fine, it's, it's not moving. And that's exactly what I wanted to see all the time. I don't see anything moving. That's what one thing that is. I'd rather be flat, I'd rather be boring, because I don't want something going on. I'm just going to show you one thing. And if not, I'm not. Gareth's going to show you this. So this is the other one. That was another one that's going on. So now I'm going to force yourself up to blow. I'm going to blow. Okay. Excuse my craziness, by the way, so I quite enjoy this sort of stuff. But if you don't enjoy it, you wouldn't do it, would you? You know? You've got to have fun. You've got to have fun. Your drinks are in Right, okay. So, yeah, we'll move up to Terra. So, it's a slightly different application of, of monitoring technology. Um, this is right at the city centre, so quite a high profile for Birmingham. They are redeveloping uh, the old Paradise Forum shopping centre, um, tearing it all down, and putting up seven or eight new blocks. Phase one is where they are currently. Um, currently they're involved with the demolition and construction of a two-story basement. Um, and they've just won the construction of the uh, Chamberlain 1, I believe. So, very early, early stage of the project, but because of the demolishing things and because they're in the city centre, there's obviously a lot of assets and things around that they need to start having a look at. Which, uh, Basically, this one is the A38 is the north south, um, obviously, a major highway that runs through city centre. And it actually runs directly beneath the site of the redevelopment. Um, so, we're going to demolish over the top of the tunnels. While the tunnels are live, it's still operational, and they're going to construct as well, adjacent to and over the top of while they're still live. Tunnels themselves were built in the 60s. Um, and interestingly, we sort of found out that the Birmingham uh, City Council's uh, fire regulations, the tunnel actually falls foul of their own regulations. Um, so, certainly brought some challenges. It was a primary route through the city. Um, did you want to go back and do the uh, fly through? Technically, you not worry about nothing, but nothing said. Uh, previous. Uh, wrong way. Yeah, that one. How did you know this? Okay, so we're leaving. Woohoo! What do you see? So we're going to Berlin now. This is Berlin, you may be So that's a big shopping centre thing in the middle. Um, that's what they're going to rip down. Now, if I turn off the, the three D's, as well, we can see this lovely green stripe. The green stripe is the only thing that's Okay? It is actually the only one. Well, the A38 is the A38M, and it's the only bit of the motorway, which is an A road, which is also a single carriageway and five lanes wide on almost both paths. So it's a really weird, but basically most of the air yeah, traffic funnels down here in the morning and they go through these tunnels which they're smacking the head out of the bulb. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 the green is A38. But uh, yeah, you can get an appreciation there of uh, where we are, really. Right in the middle of the city. This is all the nice zones, this is all construction here, and they're destroying this bit. Is it? Right, so this proposes the NS protection. Uh, it's burning the city council's asset, um, but they wanted to take no risks on it. So obviously they were trying to pass off all the risks and all the responsibilities to the contractors doing the work above. Um, again, we're looking for a 24 7 system because it's live road tunnel at all times. They do have summer maintenance windows about once every two, three months for about one or two nights. Um, six hours a night, but the rest of the time it is operational and there is no access. Uh, again, real time alerts because they're working six days a week, uh, demolition, and they just don't want to lose program. Program is the key for these for these guys, um, which I suppose is another problem which we'll go into. We have to comply with the maintainer. The maintainer has an operations manual for that tunnel. Um, in that it specifies what they will allow to be installed in that tunnel and for them to maintain it. Um, so, in this instance, we were not allowed to use anything but stainless steel fixings. Um, and any sort of power cable that we would have used previously, we weren't allowed to use. We had to use a fire rated um, special cable that they had specified in their document. Again, not something we've come across before, but something we had to adapt to. Um, and the system must be live before any demolition or construction. Now, this is challenging, but because basically the pressure all came on us and said, monitoring has to be in before we can start the project. And I've got 10 machines on order and we want to start in three weeks' time. Um, obviously, a challenge to get it through. Um, there's a quick view of the tunnels themselves from the north just to show the traffic volumes and show what happens when they close them. So there is a massive congestion issue in Birmingham, which is why these tunnels can't be closed during the works and why they just have to remain open and the system has to run. So we've got limited windows to install maintain anything in there, so again, we need the repeatability, we need the stability in the system, and we need independent systems, so that we've got something, if one system goes down, we've got something that works. We had nothing to go on. Uh, we had an old report, so we had some old EDS from the 1968 construction, that showed a rough layout and uh, some civil engineering drawings. But we had no report on the structure itself, how it would react, what tolerances we had to work with, or what we were trying to monitor. So, fundamentally, when you start with these projects, what you want to know is, what are our tolerances? What are we trying to measure? And in this instance, we didn't have it. We had it ready on the other side going, we've got the machines ordered, we need to start in six weeks. So, we devised the system using sort of our knowledge of structures and other projects. Um, the big issue here was the clearance of traffic. So, the tunnels that said they were built in the 60s, there is no clearance to the big HGVs now that go through these things. So all the European HGVs have come across all the other sides of this traffic. This tunnel was never designed for that. Um, we found out sort of three or four weeks into the process that Birmingham City Council said all of our equipment had to be offset at 600 mil from any of the, uh, the live traffic. There comes a further problem when the wall is 500 mil from the traffic. So, um, yeah, their own infrastructure was installed and failed with their own regulations, which makes it entirely difficult for us to start building more equipment on the walls uh, and systems in there. So, we had an original design, um, we had to throw it out the window, um, it was our best case design, we then had to modify that and refine it down to something we could actually do. Despite them being, you know, against their own tolerance, they would not allow us to install in 
uh, problems with the data system. So we were the match to our parents. We had to be 600 mil away. So the other thing on this one was asbestos. There's an asbestos lining in the tunnel, which meant that we could not drill or fix anything. We had to get a specialist contractor in the shadow back, who then had to put the holes on under isolation to do any fixings in there. So again, we had to use what was already installed in the tunnel to try and fix two uh, and minimise any sort of drilling and fixing works. The other problem was there's a fireproof and a waterproofing on the structure. So drilling anything back into the structure itself, you then void the warranty on the waterproofing and the fireproofing. So we couldn't take that risk. We had to then pass that to the tunnel maintainer and say, we need you to install everything. We just didn't have the ability to install it. We had to direct it where we needed it, but at the end of the day, they were the maintainer and they were the ones providing warranties. So it's just a lot of extra work to try and get something done. Now, as I said, maintaining requirements, all the wild steel, all brackets that we would use on another project. Um, despite this being for us what we would call temporary works installation, this is not designed to be up there for 20 years, 30 years. This is designed to be in there for the duration of the construction. So in this case, it's going to be three or four years. We would call it temporary works. The tunnel maintainer said, no, everything has to be to the standard of a permanent construction installation. So very challenging site. We go through this. Yeah. We came up with an ACS tilt sensor based system, again, because that's our experience. Um, cut the cover tunnel, 600 metres, we're doing about 300 metres of that tunnel, 24-7. 150 odd tilts, it's a big old number of Oh, well, can't do anything wrong there. 
the end, and if they can't do it, they can't do it. Um, and we'll never try this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, ooh, let's find a way to zoom, zoom, zoom. So, this is that is done, by the way. This is right. When it hits the curve, there's about 130 millimeters to the wall. And that's obviously when the camera of the road is pushing the top of the truck away from the wall. You know, that's absolutely tiny, isn't it? And you're going to get on the top. There's a person, there she is, I don't know. One of them goes through, and it's got a bit of cloth or something on the top. It wipes out all the lights on the top of the tunnel. It pulls pull down all the bushes. They have to change all the lighting in the tunnel to uh, rebate LEDs because all the normal lights kept ending up on the floor where the trucks went through. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, build a tunnel where there's a car in your own kit. Brilliant. But let's go over there. I'm going to sit down to it. Um, Total damage and tool sets is to move to the mansion. What did we do? Well, two long, thin tunnels and effectively no, do now, do more. This is the So, uh, the here, and then off towards the uh, other end. There are all these pink bits of beams and tiller sensors and everything. Okay, so, you know, tiller, tiller, tiller. Present 35, south 33. So, so you can see the whole thing is absolutely congested. And what we were trying to do, I mean, was Trying to measure these beams and how much the beam is elevated. So you've got to measure how much the beam is elevated, but you're not allowed to contact anything onto the beam. So how do you actually measure the deflection of the beam when you can't actually touch it? Yeah, that's what we thought we were going to do. But we found out something where the water drill is the beam. Um, and we found out a way of fixing the instruments, which is went around to the fellow and said, can you make this? He went, yeah, rather than And then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we made a set, we made us the mark still, took it down, and then we went, no, you're not putting over the other tunnel. We just spent it around and get these brackets made, and now he's done. Right, anyway, stay still, carry on. So we did, we got to take this out, we worked out how fat we were going to be the top station was. And that's all you think about the bottom. Do you remember me saying that I'm missing the lens out of the instruments? That's that. Yeah? So it doesn't matter if it's just lens out of the instruments from sort of an angle there. Up it goes. Yeah, maybe they think this is open custom for them. Limited clearance for everything. Not come across it before, really. Not come across it at all. So we figured it out. I don't think it's so much here. There's a lot of strutting. Hang on, so like we said, the strutting is passing back to those beams and to the structure. What we'll do is we've got all the monitoring all the time. All the positions, all the tiller sensors, everything like that. Because they're related back to what we want to measure. So for the thing we want to measure is that will move and they're now physical move. Oh, we did. I just three minutes. A prison, maybe tell it, boom, tie it up. Didn't have to drill anything. Didn't have to make one drill hole for the prison. Well, I see that not only the children's of some area where the world is struck, but where there was, that's what we did. When we can start up this route, so if you can do it, so you can run over the old things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there are a lot of prisons, uh, 360 prisons, all the way up onto three ships. What we have to make sure is not just it was in, it wasn't going to fail, it wasn't going to drop down. It wasn't going to be a problem for the people who are using the tunnel. Because if I'm driving me through a tunnel, and I couldn't hit the wheels in my car, I'm not going to be happy. And if a power set is in there, and the car goes off, that's where we're going to get results. Because we're going to start running up and say, where are my data? Where are my data? So, as he said, this is where the coding is set up. See, this is where the coding is here. 
some random data showing nice physics patterns, something unusual on that one. We know it is the figures in Kenya, which is better than the because they're doing it, you know, better than this, but no more motion going on in the tunnels. It's going to come with us in the fitties and fixes this. Um, lots more pretty flat patterns. We love this as much. You can bring it colour scheme because they're different alarm levels. You can even say, look, I've got a few instruments and they're all there. I'm generally again. But I mean, you can see data, you can see actually heat maps and things like this. So this is a different contour plan for the prisons. Obviously, the other moves down, you can get a dip in your, your contour plan, wouldn't you? It's all ready, there's nothing happening there. Down to 1.2 millimeters, 1.3 There's this absolutely nothing here. Two millimeters. Generally, you can even be the way the scheme is installed. The reason is the relative, not absolute, because you can't see out of the tunnel if you've only got three agents in the middle. You can't get an absolute position, so all you're doing is measuring the relative strength. So when the position between two rooms changes, then something can move. But if you put two rooms together, when the structure is moving in one of the streets, it's not going to collapse because it's all going to move up and down. What's your matter? Now then, let go. We did very, 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 very little movement. Why do we have a little movement? Because nothing's happening. You know? We don't know what we're doing with the seven now. We did this all. But so you know, we have problems with these things. You have power cuts, you have pieces of kit that fall down. You even have software that fails on instruments and they sit up on the wall and crash. Yeah? So there was three or four days where these brand new instruments straight into the back of the canyon, put them up on the wall, the works, until you couldn't get access to the tunnel, and then the software wall crashed. And then you can't get back in three days. So, so we spoke to the fact that we said, why did this? Oh, there might be a bug in the software. Thanks a lot. What are you going to fix it? I'll give you a free bit of kit that then turns the power on off differently. Okay, done. But that has nothing to do with you should have told us that before, and we would have done it at the start. Now we've got lost data. Now, the guys at the top who said, I'm going to get a new machine, but then I'm not going to get a when you better get that data, and we'll move down and look at every night with a few other and then everything you sell. Ah, woo! Don't want to get that. Um, but... You've seen our... And the really good thing is that I'm not sure because, you know, we've probably done about six and a half hours of talent talking, but from you guys, anything you want to say, if you want to ask? Open the floor. Hello, Terry. Can you Arabs, 
they do their finite analysis. They're the ones that we rely on to say, this is what we need to monitor to. Um, I see that, so this is a factual reporting of, of movement using the census we've got. Um, but there has to be some realism in it. And yeah, to this day, designers will try and avoid risks wherever possible. And you will get silly steps that people need to push back on. You can't just accept what the designer gives you because that builds in their, their safety factor, their insurance factor. So, you know, from a contractor's point of view, the client's designers tell them you've got two mil. You know, in your head, you've got five or six mil. But it's where the risk sits and who's happy to carry that risk. So, but be prepared to challenge them because I've challenged almost everyone to respect I've got four tolerance because more than often it's, it's unrealistic. Okay. Any others? Let me frame. Hello. Uh, we did it consider it. I think it's the you can you can tell us. Uh, uh, the problem we had was from the power source to where the instruments were. The first sort of ones were the 305, 310 meters in. Now, when you can do that, really, is that, and it will go, um, yeah, about that distance, but you, you then go to thicken up your cables quite a lot because you get it there and sort of like overthrow a lot of resistance to the cable. Um, but what's the point, really, when they wouldn't allow you to put that kind of cable in? So we just went away with it, it's said, because the power line was already there in canal tunnels, it runs along the inside of the trunking, and in the uh, power service, they have to put this brought the old cable in, and we just do a little bit of the uh, power so we Power with the things there, calm down power at the same time, bring it back out to the radio network. So all the radios we had in the tunnels, um, they didn't have a power line, they didn't have a comm line, they had an Ethernet cable. Um, and uh, Tom sit back there, yeah, why all up? Then how long? Three nights for another time? He hated doing it. It was kind of all bloody awful. You, you've got this cable where it's a, the thickness of each strand of the cable was basically a piece of it. You, know, you tried bending that, try cramping that, try doing it. It was virtually impossible. The bloke had sore hands for a week after, you know. Um, so for now, I think it was yes, it was considered, um, it didn't use it last, but in uh, as it wasn't practical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you find the drinks? Call up a lot. Any others? Happy? Yeah. I, um, I really would like to say thank you very much for coming out tonight. It's been Really, really nice to get such a large turnout. Much appreciated because it's dark and it wasn't raining earlier, so uh, yeah, I'm making a good night. Thank you very much. <laughs>